and adoration. We give you all exaltation, all honor, all power. Oh, Lord, Father, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you as you connect today again. It's a wonderful day to be in the presence of God. The word say in his presence. There is fullness of joy at the right hand of the Father. They are pleasures forevermore. Yes, Lord. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way, Father. That your name will be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God bless you. As you connect, can you connect? Can we just share this on our wall? Invite your friends and families. Let's have a great time in the presence of God. The words say in his presence. There is fullness of joy at the right hand of the Father. There are pleasures forevermore. What a mighty God. The word for us today is form me, Holy Spirit. Ask God to form you. Let God begin to complete everything he has begun in you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Rabba Baba. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you do and continue to do. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be adored. Let your name be worshipped for who you are, who you represent, and who you will always be. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can we just share this on our walls? The Lord bless you. The Lord multiply you. And let him make his face to shine upon you. You shall continue to be the head and not the tail. You will be above and not beneath. The Lord will make his countenance to be bright in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. For me, Holy Spirit. Ask him to form you today. Just begin to thank him. As you are asking God to form you, God is going to complete what he has begun in your life. The Bible says the Lord that has begun a good job will perfect it. So you are getting into the finishing place now. You know, many of you, God is finishing what he has started in your life. And your life will never be the same again. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Holy Spirit, we worship you. We exalt, we magnify you, we glorify, we adore you. Hallelujah. Have your way, O Lord. Have your way, Father. Have your way that your name will be glorified. Hallelujah. Laki taraba sikotobo lebrogo sokotobo bobo makina mayika na mama there are seasons and there are times the season that you are in now is a, is a, is a season that is different from the regular seasons many of us are coming out of a very terrible last year to, and we are in a year that we thought will be just fine but this thing continued to linger and now we're adding inflation to it and people are going hungry in different countries and nations and cities. Let me tell you, God is hearing our cry. That's why we have to cry the more. God said to Moses, I've heard the cry of my people and the affliction of their tax master. And I am come down to deliver them. Now you go to Pharaoh, tell him to let my people go that they might serve me. God is letting you go for you to be a servant. The only condition to be free is to serve God. That's why I've told people, I say, look, if you are not ready to serve him, don't even try to go into deliverance. Deliverance is not a wash. Deliverance is just one part. And if you are delivered and you are not discipled, you will be worse than where you were before. That's not your portion. So before you begin to go out, make sure that God has formed you completely and giving you all the things that you need, the necessities. That we fulfill the dreams and the the the, the purpose of his, his creation in your life what he has asked you to do do you have you received all the instructions do you have what it takes 
to tackle, you know, what we are tackling. I've seen people that begin to pray, you know, began to pray concerning the situation, maybe family, breaking of courses. And the more they pray, it's like nothing is happening. It's not that you are not praying, but you don't have the capacity, spiritually, to be able to drive out the, what is wrong in your family. Some of these things, you have to deal with them legally. The legality of the word, you must know the words. And you come, you argue your case. Let me tell you, if you, if you, if you are trying to take a, a territory or possess a place, you don't possess them emotionally or by faith. Faith is needed to a certain level, but you have to go legally and give reasons. That's why God said, bring your strong reasons. Why I should do what you want me to do for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, kataraba shikataba, lika nama mama. We thank you, Lord, we bless you. We worship, we reference you. We glorify, we adore you for who you are, who you represent, and who you will always be. Oh, labiga sikataba, just bless him. Lord, we are grateful for life today. We are grateful for healing, for prosperity, for the opportunity to be in your presence. The word says in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy, not half joy, complete joy. And at the right hand of the Father, there are pleasures forevermore. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for making a name for yourself in our lives. Thank you for bringing us into the place of completion. And before you be complete, you must be formed. Let the formation of God continue in your life. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive all the ingredients, all the arsenals, all the particles, everything that will fulfill the purpose of God in your life. Let it begin to come now. And if you don't know some of them, ask God to show you. And the ones that you have not received, ask him to give it to you. Because grace multiplies. Every time God is calling a man, God is calling you into a place of sonship. But you start from priesthood and you migrate. Why the things in your life have not submitted? Because you have, you have priesthood is not complete yet. So you need more formation. You need more formation. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for who you are, who you represent, and who you will always be. The Bible says that the entrance of the world giveth light and understanding to the simple. Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let the word that we are hearing now not be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God that will bring glory unto thy holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. God bless you. So the word for us is, form me, Holy Spirit, or form me, O Lord. You know, we need to be formed because if we are not formed the way God wants us to be formed, we will be deformed. And that's not where you want to go. You don't, that's not where you want to be. You want God to show up in your life and do all that he has promised that he will do. He is God all by himself. There is none like him. There is none that will be compared unto him. Hallelujah. So this day is a new day, a day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and we shall be glad in it. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to go to the word of God and as we, as we move forward today. In Hosea chapter 14, verse 2, the Bible says, take with you words. That's what I just want to get out there. You don't just go into the camp of the enemy and begin to say, oh, because I'm a Christian, devil, you just need to go. The devil is a, is an, is a, is a, is a tactical lawyer. And you know, in law, what wins the case most time is not whether you are right or wrong. It's your ability to, to, to logically present your case. Logically. Hallelujah. By the law, your ability to argue your case systematically. And some of us have been arguing cases and we have not won because we don't have all it takes. We have not done enough research concerning that issue. So we are just coming, speaking from the top. Hallelujah. But today, I want you to come not by yourself. Come with God. The Bible says, take with you words. Take with you words. And turn to the Lord, saying unto him, take away all iniquities and receive us graciously. So, we, so will we render the cows of our lips. This is prayer now. You don't just go to God say, oh God, because I've shown up in church or I've been serving or I've been working as an usher, I've been sowing seed or I've been a 
member of a place. God, everything will just work for me. The Bible says, take words to him. Even God wants you. He said, put me in remembrance of my word. Haven't you read that in the Bible? God wants us to come to him, you know, in a legal way. You legalize the word. You bring the word as it is. Lord, you said that this will happen if this happens. And this has happened. Lord, can you make it happen? Take with you words and turn to the Lord, say it unto him. Take away all iniquities and receive us graciously. So will we render the cows of our lips? We shall render it to you. We begin to bring our mouth to you. But I want you to see where we are going today. We are talk I'm talking about, um, you know, from me, Holy Spirit, the formation of God, how God can form a man. And you know, when you are forming something, the formation doesn't you don't just bring anything. I will use something like when we are making food, food. Many of you that have been cooking before, or you have cooked, or you have seen where food that made, you don't take the whole ingredients and put it at once. Even if you have all the right things, when you put it, the food will not give you the particular taste. You might bring a food that look like a food, but it will not be, it will not be eatable because some of them will die before the food will get done. There are things that enter first, and you have to know what goes first. Some food you start with water, some of them you start with oil, some then you start with the meat. It doesn't matter. But you have to know the formation. That's how God begins to form a man. At a certain stage of your life, God will add something again. God does not give us everything at the same time. Nobody, even if God has called you to be a great man of God, you carry that in your concentration and your ordination. From, your, from the loin, when you come out, but in every certain stage, God will say at, at 15, you begin to manifest this. And if you grow well and grow in the, in the place of God, at 20, you add that. So people will be 20 and even 30. But in the spirit, they have not grown to 20 years. They are still 15 in the spirit. So the thing that was supposed to happen at 20 will not happen. Hi, I can't imagine. I want you to say to yourself, grow up fast. Because every time we mature to a stage in the spirit, we receive a measure. A measure will be added. So God told a man of God here, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. He said, before I formed thee in the belly. So look at God now. God was still using the word forming. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou commit forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So look at the formation. Before I formed thee, God took time to form every part of this man. And he didn't know. Even though God said, go and preach, he was arguing. He said, you know, I can't preach because I am a child. If you look at verse 6, he said, then said I, ah, Lord, God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, saying, say not I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee says the Lord. God said, don't be afraid of the, the mighty men you see, or the low men, or people that you are going to meet on the road. I am with you. If we read it down, but what I wanted there is before, before I formed it. Have, have you thought about what God has put in you? And what God has not put? Because when you are being formed, there are some things that is not complete. Oh, Rabaga, Shikata, Balika, Nama, Mama. There are some things you put in the, in the food. At the end of the food, when the food is already done, Sometimes the food is in what we call auxiliary cooking. You have dropped the food from the, from the burner, but the pot is still boiling because the pot is already hot. Then you put something. That one is to bring out some particular test. Some, some of you, God have put everything, but God needs to put some spice on top of you. Just spice it up. Then he brings out a, a, a particular aroma that he wanted. Hallelujah. But you have to come with the word. He said, take with you words. Form me, Holy Spirit. Let the Spirit form me. Form me as you want me to go. Because many of us, we think that it is us. I told us last night, in fact, yesterday when we were praying, I said, when even prayer, we don't know how to pray. I don't care whether you are a great man of God, you are a bishop, you are an apostle, you are a pope, you are archbishop. No. The Bible said it clearly. Romans chapter 8, 26. He said, for the Spirit helps our infirmities. For we know not what to pray as we ought to. We don't know. Many of us, we have a laundry list of what we want. And you discover that by the time you begin to search and ask God, 
You see that 20 things is the only one thing that you need. I remember many times people come for counseling and they tell you how things are terrible. And many times they just come and tell you a, a whole laundry list of their life and everything is getting to one thing. Many times everybody that you see that has challenge in life, they have two or three challenges. But people want to make it that look as if there are hundreds of them. You, you are homeless. You don't have a job. You don't have a car. As you are naming all these things, everything here is talk, talking about money. So how do you get money? You get a job or you get a business. So when you begin to produce, you can be able to buy a car, rent a house. You can, you know, be able to take care of yourself. All these things that list, that's listed is just one thing that will solve it. But sometimes we make it to be so big and we start to name them little by little. That's why I say we don't know what to pray. And sometimes we think we need money. God says money is not your problem. You need people. And God will just put one person in your life. And you just see that one person enter your life. The whole of your challenges just disappear. One person. Ah, la baga shikotobo yikana mama. So we know not what to pray. Nobody knows what to pray. We go to God, we say, oh, I want to pray for this. And you go there, we open our mouth. The Spirit of God begins to pray for us. If we let him in, many times when we begin to pray with our head, our brain, with our senses, we don't affect the heavens. In fact, our prayers don't even leave our body. It's only when the Spirit begins to make intercession that the prayers will begin to make sense because by then you are praying the mind of God. The Bible says we pray and we don't get results in the book of James because we pray amiss. What is being praying amiss? Praying not in the will of God. Even Jesus Christ, I told you in Matthew 26, in the mountain of Gethsemane, Jesus went and prayed a prayer that God will not answer. There are prayers that God will never answer. He wanted to pray. He loved some people and they loved him. The Bible says, and he said, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass by me. He was talking in flesh then. And he knew that God will not answer that prayer. But at the time he said, thy will be done. He said, not as I will, but thy will. So if, if it's not the will of God, it might sound good, it might look right. But God is the one that sanctions everything. Hallelujah. Rebo go sakata baba. La baba baba. Not as I will, but thy will be done, O oh Lord. Form me, Holy Spirit. When you are formed, that is when you fun function in the ordination of your life. When you are formed, that is when you begin to run the race as it's supposed to be run. When you are formed, that is when you begin to fulfill the purpose of God. And I tell us many times, we don't have a purpose until we discover who God is in our life. In God, you find yourself. If you have not read the word of God, the Bible, and see yourself there, just keep reading. If you have not prayed and God will begin to show up, just keep praying. Because you must discover who you are in him. The Bible says in Acts chapter 17, verse 28, he said, in him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. So he's our environment. You say, I have a dream. No dream. We don't have any dream. Our dream is God. When we discover him, we recover our destiny. Because it is him that controls. If we decide to go a different path, some people have gone their own way. God will not bother you. And become very successful in, in doing that. But they will die like men and just be forgotten because you never worked in your people. It's like you never existed on earth. Even though you came and you left, nobody will remember what you did because you told your own path. If you look at the beginning of the beginnings, when Adam gave birth to Cain and Abel, and God demanded for them to make sacrifice, and the Bible said Cain took something that was not good. We don't know what people say it was rotten animals. Some people say it was crops that didn't do well. But whatever it is, his sacrifice were not fully accepted. And the one of his brother was accepted. He killed his brother. And God laid a curse on him. But Abel was crying for him. How did I know? Abel said, God, don't punish him. Because God, the Bible compared Abel prayer to the one of Jesus. You cannot compare apple and orange. The Bible said for the blood of 
Jesus speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. So Abel's blood was speaking, God, forgive him, he's my brother. Help him, don't kill him. When Abel prayed that prayer, God left Cain alone. Cain went and had children that built great economy. If you read the, 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 the from Genesis chapter 4, that word, you will see that the generation of Cain became very powerful. God destroyed all of them. All of them. With their wealth and everything. They built a great civilization. They were very good in heart and in iron, in molding, in construction. They were good in music. They were good in different things. But until Adam had another child called Seth, and Seth had a child called Enos, that was when people began to pray. God began to form a civilization from Seth. That is where we came from. Went to Noah and up to Abraham. The generation of Cain were all wiped out. They were destroyed. Even though they built great things. It's like they never existed. So wait for God to form you. Don't just live because of yourself. Some people, when God gives you one, you know, in the I told you about cooking. Now let's use cooking again as the, 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 the case study. You know, you want to make a porridge, you want to make anything, whatever it is. There are things that enter. And many Christians and many of us, we are so excited to, to get out. God have put one, two, three, maybe there's five ingredients to complete your ordination. And you have received three. And you are manifesting powerfully. Many of us will run out. Don't, not knowing that the Holy Ghost has seven dimensions in the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God has seven, seven. If you look at Isaiah chapter 11, I'm, and I'm going to show you in a minute. In Isaiah 11, the Bible said, from verse 1 and 2, let's just read 1 and 2 by the grace of God. Isaiah 11, 1 and 2, the Bible says, And there shall come forth a rod. A rod is authority, power. Out of the stem of Jesse. Jesse was the father of David. So that rod came, which was David. And a branch shall grow out of that root, which is Jesus Christ. Verse 2. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. That is one dimension of the Holy Ghost. The spirit of wisdom, two. The spirit of understanding, three. The spirit of counsel, four. The spirit of might, five. The, the spirit of the knowledge of fear and the spirit of the fear of God, six and seven. The spirit of knowledge is one and the spirit of the fear of God is seven. These seven dimensions of the Holy Ghost, the Bible talked about it in Revelation. That's not where I'm going today. When the Bible talks about the seven spirit of the Lord, this is the seven spirit of the Lord. This, all these seven of them is attached to the Holy Ghost. Every child of God, every Christian, when you come to Jesus and say, I do, when you receive Jesus Christ, the Bible says the Spirit of God will rest upon you. That is one dimension. And a lot of Christians have been in God 30 years. They are only walking with one that they are, It's like you're just boiling water. Only water is in the pot. Their food cannot be eaten. If you eat it, there will be no test in that food. Because you carry one. All the time of Solomon, in his might, in his might, everything that Solomon did, the Bible says God gave him wisdom and understanding. Two dimensions of the Holy Ghost. This guy became successful. He had might. He had everything. When he went to the mountain of Gilbo and prayed that prayer, I said, God, who am I that you have given me? These people that are like the sand of the earth. And the Bible says God came that night and asked him, what do you wish that I do for you? And he said, God, give me understanding and wisdom. To administer justice to these people. Oh, la baga chikata ba ba ba. God gave him that. His father, what God gave, what the greatest part of David was he has might. David fought over 60 battles in his life. He defeated everyone. He has never lost a battle. Might. Might is the strength of God. A boy of 17 years challenging it. A warrior that has fought all his life. The Bible says he came in the might of God. He said, you come to me with this. I come to you with the Lord of hosts. God gave him might. Might is power. So sometimes we, 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 we don't even know what we are called to do. So we don't know what to ask for. Just stay in his presence. Say, form me, Holy Spirit. Let him form you. Because God knows the assignment that you have. Many of us, we think that God wants us to go to the right. And we are asking for a particular dimension that 
you see people that are in the right use it while god says stay where you are you don't even have to go to the right and they, they, you don't need that dimension there's a dimension i'll give you here some of us will insist and say i need that one and god will give it to you because you don't understand it so that the, the dimension will destroy you or make you lose god the prodigal soul was a, an example a typical example he came say give me that which belongs to me yes it is his right as a, the legal son of the man to get something but his father was still alive for christ's sake the father said hold on he said no 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 and he was not even the first son he said give me that which belongs to me give me my own share of the, the bible said the father divided that which he have into two so he took half of the man's investment and it flew out and went to a far country. What happened? The devil was waiting for him. When he arrived, the devil welcomed him. And the Bible says he began to go into unrighteous living. And he lost everything. Did God give him that power? God gave it to him. A lot of people, what they have received from God is what destroyed them. In fact, the children of Israel were a typical example. When they were leaving Egypt, God said, you are not coming out empty. And God collected the whole gold and silver, every precious stone in Egypt, and gave it to them. He said, go to your masters and collect from them all the precious stones. And they went and borrowed from their, from their masters, and they were giving them. Do you know that the same thing that they collected from, God gave them as a gift to send them out. After 400 years of walking, they came to the wilderness, and just Moses was away for 40 days, and they called Aaron. I don't know what came up Aaron, the high priest. And say, make a God that we can see. And Aaron said, what are we going to say? They began to donate their gold. It was that gold that they used to mold a golden calf. What the blessings of God, they used it to worship idol. Oh, Rakita Rabasaka. And they, they were singing and dancing to the calf. Say, this is the God that brought us out of Egypt. Be careful what you're asking God to give you. And if God has given you something through the Holy Ghost, Find out how to use it. Because power corrupt and absolute power corrupt absolutely. Sometimes you receive a dimension, it begins to go to your mind, go to your head. Aaron was a first priest. In fact, the, the priesthood was formed by Aaron. Aaron was the foundation of priesthood. In the natural. But what happened? It was that same priesthood that destroyed him. God killed him and killed all his sons. Say, for me, Holy Spirit. I want us to pray one prayer. Say, God, Holy Spirit, for me. For me. The Bible says God was telling Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. He said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. I ordained thee a prophet unto nations. So, even before Jeremiah was a fetus, God has seen a prophet. But that, the fullness of his prophetic ministry, will manifest in different dimensions. There are times that you put salt. After a while, you put you put no. After some time, you top some water. Before the food dawns, you put vegetable. That's how God forms us. In every layer, God will add some measure of grace. After some time, you, you begin to operate in another layer of grace. But many of us, we are not so patient. We are impatient. We just want to manifest. We are so hungry to manifest. It's good to manifest, but manifest by the pace of God, by the power of God, by the anointing of God, by the might of God. When you stay with the pace of God, you go far. Say, form me, Holy Spirit. Form me, Lord. Form me. Ask God to form you. Let God begin to form you. You can't form yourself. It's in the formation that God will say, okay, this is my daughter need might because of what is going on. I've seen people that have prayed family breaking of courses. In fact, it happened to me as I'm giving you this testimony now. I used to take men, men of God, go to my father's house. We were praying and fasting, praying, praying, praying. Nothing happened until God began to show me. In fact, I was praying the wrong prayer. God began to show me what he wanted me to do. The moment I yielded to the, to the word of God and began to serve, committed every part of me. And 
everything that I was praying for began to change. And some people will pray like that and pray and force the hand of God and break the hand. God will give them, say, please, go. The devil will be waiting on the other side. That's not your portion. <laughs> That's not your portion. I want you, when you receive from God, you keep it. That's why Solomon went. Solomon knew that his brother Adonijah was not his problem. If he can get God, that throne that Adonijah has occupied will be easy. So he went to the mountain of Gilbo. And there he prayed and he sacrificed 1,000 cattle. That night God came down and said, what is happening? What do you wish that I do for you? And Solomon did not ask for the death of Adonijah, but begin to ask for war. He said, God, give me understanding and wisdom to handle all these people. That is two dimensions. And God gave it to him. Some of us have one dimension. And we don't even know what we have. Say, Lord, show me the way. Show me what you have put in me. Show me my purpose. Lead me in the path that I should go. I like the way David prayed. If you look at the book of Psalms, David is a systematic prayer. He will tell God, say, lead me in the path. Show me. He, he never put himself in front. He said, I will look up to the hills. Where will my help come from? My help will come from the Lord. Who make the heaven and the earth? He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the So he always allowed God to be the one that guided him. In Psalm 23, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leaded me beside still water. So David understood that, look, if I have to do this thing, it's not by myself. Because if you look at the guy, out of eight sons, he was left in the bush to die. There was no love in that family. But God looked at him. But how do you get yourself formed? It's by the place of prayer. Luke chapter 4, 49, the Bible says, Jesus said to them, and behold, I send the promise of my father unto you. So there's a promise for every child of God. Jesus said, behold, this is after resurrection. This is not, not pre. This is post-resurrection. So he has finished the work. People will say, by now, everything is supposed to be happening without anything. We don't even have to pray anymore. No, that was when prayer is money there. Jesus came to them and said, I send the promise of my father unto you. But what? Tarry you in the city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem was where he was killed. That was a place of death. Some people will say, please get out of this place. This place is terrible now. No, Jesus said, stay here. Because the spirit of death is hovering in Jerusalem. He needed them to overcome that power. He needed them to challenge that thing in the spirit. He said, tarry you in Jerusalem until you are endued with power. And the power that they need here is a witness power. They need to have an encounter so they can be able to explain, explain to people what they saw. Carry you in the city of Jerusalem. Until you are endued with power from on high. And when you say until, how long? Some of us are so in a hurry. You have prayed for six months, one year, and nothing has happened. Say, God, I don't think this is working. Then you want to try something else. After four years, you are back to the square one. I've seen people have prayed with three years after, five years after. They show up again and you see them in a the meeting. You can't even remember when you know them. And they come back and they tell you stories that they told you four years ago. Because they have hovered everywhere. The church is not a revolving door. The church is the foundation of the truth. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he said, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. It's not before the Holy Ghost comes. It's after he has come. Then you will receive power. But the power is the power to witness. And God will begin to give you territory from there. You see now, these people did not ask for territory. They were just trying to survive. They were hiding before. But Jesus said, when you receive power, you shall witness in Jerusalem. Jerusalem that he died, he said, you will take this city and Judea and Samaria and, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Oh, la bagasika ta bababa. Rakotorobo shekete bababa. Even though they have seen him, you know, the fastest way to teach somebody is to let them see what you are doing. Jesus has allowed them to see a lot, a lot about him. But the dimension of the Holy Ghost, not all of them have seen it. Many of them have seen him pray, lay hands on people. They have seen him cast out demons, preach the word of God. 
They have seen him come with proverbs and parables. They see a lot of those. It was good, but they have not yet received the Holy Ghost. There is something that was still lacking in their journey with God. And God needed them to get that. So in Acts chapter 2, verse 2, the Bible says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they appeared unto them global tongues like of, as of fire. And it set upon each of them. There was fire upon their heads. And everyone will see. And something happened, verse 4. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So you see, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. They didn't control the Holy Ghost. They allowed the Spirit to give them utterance. The utterance that they have to speak was from the Holy Ghost. That's why before you go and speak anywhere in the name of the Lord, ask God to give you utterance. It was the utterance that made people to come. And when Peter came that day, the same Peter that denied, Peter and Judas, do you know that when Jesus was dying, Peter and Judas commit almost the same kind of crime. Judas were the ones that betrayed him. Peter also betrayed Jesus. They asked him, do you know this man? He denied three times. Even a child was saying, this man was one of them. Peter, Peter said, I don't know him. He betrayed Christ, even though he didn't collect money. But he was restored because he came back. Judas was not restored because he, he went and killed himself. But that day, the same Peter we know stood up and said, men of Judah, men of Jerusalem, and you all inhabitants of the land, the same Jesus you killed is alive. The Bible says, and he preached. Over 3,000 people gave their life to Christ. There was a revolution in the whole city. People began to move into different dimensions of manifestation of the Holy Spirit. That was the act of the Holy Ghost. I don't know why they call it the acts of the apostles. But this, the whole of act was, the Holy Ghost was manifested from dimension to dimension. It was so powerful. If you want to understand the move of the Spirit, go and read the whole Acts from Acts chapter 1 till the end. It is the Acts of the Holy Ghost. Everywhere they entered, power was being emitted. There was so much manifestation of power. Oh, la vikarama shakataba. But you need to be formed. To, to enter that, that dimension, you need to be formed. If you look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, the Bible says, And the Lord formed man in the dust of the ground and breathed into his nose the breath of life, and man became a living soul. You see, you see the formation. God used the, the earth to begin to form man. The Bible says, God, they, they just told us how many dimensions here, three. God formed man with dust. God breathed him into man the breath of life. A man became a living soul. So life is in the living. You need to be formed today. And even Adam didn't get everything. If you look at Genesis chapter 1 26, before man was even created. Because in Genesis chapter 2, man was formed. The man that was created and the man that was formed. It's the same person the way they came out in different times. God created man in himself. And God formed man outside. So Genesis chapter 1 to the Bible said, the Lord said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So Adam came out as the image of God. But the likeness of God have not yet bestowed upon him. The likeness of God is all these dimensions of the Holy Ghost that I'm talking about. Every child of God that received Christ received the Holy Ghost. But we don't receive might, power, counsel. We don't receive wisdom, knowledge, the fear of God. These are the seven dimensions of the spirit. It's the same one spirit, but it has seven formations. It's like light, beams of light coming in different dimensions. Based on your assignment, God will give you a particular measure and dimension of himself. Look at the beginning of beginning. Genesis 1 chapter 1. The Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But look at verse 2. And the earth was without form. The earth is, was formless. It was like an amweber. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. So when somebody has no formation, they don't have much. You need to be formed. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the deep. And the Spirit of God now, which is the power of God, moved and hovered upon the face of the waters. Oh, Rakataba. By the time the word of God came, the Bible says he sent his word. 
let there be light and there was light god began to put things on earth you see how formation happened it doesn't happen in one day god began to put there was first day second day third day until seven days god began to form the earth put things because at first the earth was without form it was formless it was shapeless so we need to be formed once you are formed and you have to be formed by his own curriculum he is the one that will decide which part he wants to throw with you don't look at somebody and say okay i need that dimension you might desire it if it's not in the will of god concerning you you will not get it but if you force the hand of god you might get it and you might not manifest it well oh la baga shikata barika na mama makoto robo sekete baba ba la briga shakata balika na mama i go philippians chapter 2 verse 6 the bible says who been in the form of god this is jesus christ now he's not to be formed he has already been formed the bible says who been he, he was in the same class but he was in the form of god philippians 2 verse 6 he was in the form of god taught it not robbery to be equal with god but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form he now took a form of a servant even though he was in the form of god I, I want to explain this now. Jesus was here. But because of the assignment, that's why assignment is key. The assignment that he has to be a servant to fulfill that. So he took him the nature. He took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. He continued to go down. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death on the cross because god cannot die if he was in the form of god he can die I, I, am i making sense today the bible says jesus being in the form of god did not take it robbery to say i'm equal to god why should i know he came down and became a servant and took the nature and the likeness of man and also died i went because man can die, but God cannot die. Ha rabaga shikata ba 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 ba. Brakoto robo sekete ba ba ba. Makata rabali kana mama ma. Say form me, Holy Spirit. Form me, O Lord. Let God begin to form you, form your character, form your being. Because in Him we live, in Him we move, and in Him we have our being. Every part of us is formed by God. Let the Holy Spirit possess me. Take over my vocal cord. Take my life. Take my walk. Everything I do, let it be. As, as a manifestation of a dimension of God according to the will of God because it must be by his will. John chapter 20. If you look at verse 21, the Bible said, Then said Jesus unto them, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. So we are sent. So we are representing something. Verse 22. And when he had said this, the Bible says he breathed into them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. This is this is post resurrection. Jesus has resurrected now, but he needed to come and give them something first. He had this meeting with them and he gave them the Holy Ghost. It was when um, this guy came, Thomas, and they told him that Jesus came. He didn't believe it, and Jesus came back and talk to him. If you read down in verse 27, and he said to Thomas, reach hither thy finger, and behold my hand, and reach hither thy hand, and toss in my side, and be not faithless, but believe it. He said, don't be a person with, that will have no faith. And Thomas, Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me thou had believed blessed are there that have not seen and yet believe so jesus came back bible said he breathed into them ah, he poured something these people have been working with him for three and a half years he has died and resurrected but there's still some spies he has not put something in them even after he said receive you the holy ghost there's, 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 there's a spirit of witness. They have not carried that one. 
He still told them to wait. The Bible says he breathed into them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Did they receive Holy Ghost then? They received it. But they want to go out. They want that gives boldness. They want to do ministry. They don't have it yet. I told you the Holy Spirit has dimensions. The Holy Ghost, the first one they received was here. In the book of Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon thee. That is the Holy Ghost. But now, it will begin to give you a different dimension. That's one. The Spirit of wisdom. Two. And understanding. Three. And the Spirit of counsel. Four. And might. Five. The Spirit of knowledge. Six, and the spirit of the fear of God. That is the seventh spirit of God. They are all residents in the Holy Ghost. So Jesus gave them one dimension. Say, receive the Holy Ghost. He breathed into them. So now their body will be fermented. God will begin to fill their body. Break every fallow ground. Remove every removable. So the day the spirit of ministry, witness come, boom! Their body was ready to receive that dimension. And the Bible said they came, came like tongues of fire. They went out and began to speak the word. They began to come out with a new utterance. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So when you have these dimensions, that is when you can stand tall and speak as God in Isaiah 54, verse 17. Say, no weapon that is formed against me. Because the devil has formations also. No weapon. So because you are formed by God, you can categorically say, no weapon. No weapon that is formed against me, against my ministry, against my family, that shall prosper. And every tongue that will rise up against me in judgment, I condemn you today because every judgment has been given to the sons of God. If you look at John chapter 5, verse 22, the Bible says God has committed all judgment to his sons. So if the devil is about to judge you because you know that you are coming with words, don't just go to the devil with no word. You he said, Take with you words. Hosea chapter 14, verse 2. Take with you words and turn to the Lord, saying unto him, Take away all iniquities. And and receive us graciously. So will we render the calves of our lips so that we can pray. So if the devil come with the dimension of judgment, because you have a word to counter what the devil is bringing. The devil came to Jesus and said, if you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. Jesus repeated a word. Man does not live by bread alone. The Bible said, take with you what's Take words. Don't just go and say, oh, devil, you can't do anything. No, you must have a word to counter it. God is a righteous judge. And you come to God in, in, in legal, the legality of the word. When you bring a word, the devil is trying to, you bring another one. You bring five words, six words. You know what you're, so when the devil come with forms to attack you, you will say, there is no weapon that is formed against me that shall prosper. And every judgment that is coming against me, I stand as a son of God. I condemn you today in the name of Jesus. For the Bible says, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. No weapon formed against you. But you must have information before you can counter such level. Some people are not formed yet. And they want to go and carry what is bigger than them. There are some things you can't do for some time. I remember the man in Mark chapter, is it Mark chapter 9? Yes. The man brought his son to the disciples to pray. And they prayed that nothing happened. And the man came to Jesus, crying. And Jesus looked at him, saying, if you can believe, all, th all things are possible to them that believe. The man looked at the man, Jesus and said, Lord, I believe. But if I don't believe enough, help my unbelief. And that moment, Jesus cast out the demons. And later, Peter asked him, so why didn't we why weren't we able to cast out this jesus said this kind cannot go except by praying and by fasting this kind so they don't have all what it takes then but after resurrection and when they received the holy ghost they had might 
they came in the might of God as the word said in the book of Ephesians. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6. Paul was writing to the church telling them, look, the only way to overcome the enemy is say, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Might is a dimension of the Holy Ghost. I showed you in the book of Isaiah 11. Might is there. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding and the spirit of counsel and might. Might is a dimension of the Holy Ghost. So Paul said, when you attack the enemy, come with might. Don't come by yourself. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That was what David had. David was very skillful and he won over 60 battles in his lifetime. He did not lose one battle. He fought more battle than anybody that have lived in the Bible. Every war he would come, he would come on top because he had might. The power of his might. Then he said, put on. So you have to wear God like a cloth. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's not people that you see that you are fighting against, but against principalities. These are, these are spiritual forces, against powers, against rulers of darknesses of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's where the devil sits. And Paul began to give the weapons, the dimensions of weapons you need to hold. But I want you to see something. After you have known the tools to fight with, look at verse 18. If you have all these tools that were named here, you see, if, you, if you have done all to stand, stand there for guiding your loins with the, with the bracelet of righteousness and your feet with the shoot of the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherein you shall be able to quench the fiery daft of the wicked and taking the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. But if you have all the tools, but you don't have the last one, you can't win. Verse 18, he said, praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit. That is what defeats the devil. You can have the tools, you can come with might, but if you don't have prayer, forget it. Praying always, verse 18, with all prayers and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. That is what takes the devil out forever. If you are a man of prayer, you know how to fight. You put on the whole armor of God. You come with the might of God. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You are not coming by yourself. You take up the might of God. Like the angel of God in Jude 2 was telling the devil. He said, I, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. He didn't say, I rebuke you. He can't do it. Even though he was in Jamaica, the archangel that has all the powers of the heavens. The devil was what once a cherubim. And a so the devil, they were in hierarchy. They were probably the same, or the devil was higher than him. I don't know. God will explain that. But when Michael saw Lucifer carrying the dead body of Moses, he said, the Lord rebuke you. Even the Lord rebuke you. And the moment he bring that option up, Lucifer dropped the dead body of Moses and flee. That was the might of the Lord. When Lucifer even came to heaven, Revelation chapter 12, the Bible says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. They brought a dimension that he has never experienced. The blood. When you know these things, walking and warring in the de with the devil will be a kickball. You go and you fight consciously and consistently. And God will always show up every time when you call him. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9, the Bible says, for in him dwelleth all fullness of the Godhead bodily. In Jesus Christ, the fullness of the Godhead, the Godhead we are talking about, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. They dwell in him, in the bodily form. And he, we are also in him. Look at verse 10. He said, and you are complete in him. So if in Jesus, dwelling, is dwelling the, the capacity the ability of the fullness of Godhead, and I am complete inside of Christ, which is the head of all principalities and powers. That means I am far above. Oh, Rababa, 
every principality and power because I am complete in him. Acts chapter 17 to 18, in him we live, move, and have our being. But we must let him form us. We can't do it by ourselves. I'm sorry, we can't. We must let God. That's where you can say, according to the word of God in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. He said, for our light affliction, which is but a moment. So many of us are going through some stuff. The Bible says it's but a moment. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. The things that you go through, let me put it this way. It is the negatives in life that prepare you for the positive. Our light affliction, which is but a moment. There are some things that you have been asking God. He has not received it. It's for a moment. The Bible says he worked for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. The glory that is waiting for you on the other side is greater than what you are going through now. Oh, Labaga Shikatababa. God will sometimes dislocate you so he can relocate you. You know, just hold on to what you have received. Because it shall speak for you. Even though if it tarries, it will always come to pass. Hold on to God. Let God form you. That's why we pray. And after we are praying, we continue to pray. And when we pray, we pray again. We continue to pray. The Bible says, pray without seasons. We don't pray for something. We pray always. Luke chapter 18 verse 1. Men ought always to pray and not faint. The Lord will form you today. As I'm talking to you, many of you, your life is being formed. Some dimension that you don't have. You didn't even know. You are allowing God now. You are letting the Holy Spirit. You are releasing yourself. And God is coming in. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. The Bible says, be not conformed. Don't, form, don't allow yourself to be formed to the world. Be not conformed to the world, but be you transformed. Let your body be transformed by the receiving, renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be you transformed by the renewing. Your mind has said have to change. Your mentality is your method. When you change your mentality, you begin to change the way you live. La kotorobo shakata baba baba. I want you to begin to thank God as we pray now. Philippians chapter 3 verse 10, the Bible says that I might know thee. That is Paul. That I might know thee. That's the prayer you pray. That I might know thee and the power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your suffering being made conformable unto your death. I just paraphrased it. Put yourself in that place. Say, God, give me the opportunity to know you. Reveal yourself to me that I might know you and the power of your resurrection. There was a power that resurrected Jesus. The Bible says, if the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in us, that same spirit shall quicken our mortal body. Romans chapter 8, 11. It will quicken us. Quicken me. Let the spirit quicken me now. Say, God, that I might know thee and the power of your resurrection. Ask God to release himself to you. That you come out knowing him more than you have experienced him before. We don't want to just tell you about God. We want you to know that God. That's why we take time to search the world and bring this perspective to you. Some people will just tell you stories and you hear about God. You know more of him than knowing him. Of what use is it for you to know about him? And it will not benefit you than knowing him. Even though you start knowing about him before you know him. But where we are today, we don't have to slack. I want you to know him and the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his suffering. Because in God, there is suffering also. The Bible said, the fruit of the spirit is what? Love. Long suffering. is a fruit. You develop that capacity that even if Things are not where you want it to be. You are content there. You will not steal because you don't have money. You see opportunity to steal, you begin to steal. No, you don't have the fruit. 
The gift of the spirit is not the same thing as the fruit. The gift is God. Somebody can be manifesting the gift and be living in, in a very terrible lifestyle. But when you have the fruit, you are, you are who God wants you to be. Because you have grown. Every tree that grew up has fruit. You are beginning to manifest God. That's when you have love inside of you. Unconditionally. Unbiased. So the Bible said that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Be made conformable. Conforming. God will conform us unto his death. When you know that, that process, the process of becoming, how Jesus died and resurrected and all the suffering he suffered and when he's translated. When you know that, when you know that that's all you need. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you look at verse 14, he said, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling. If you read the rest of 11, 12, 13, you will understand why he said, if I know this, then I will press, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. There's a mark that you have to press into. You press into it by waiting upon the Lord. You stay there in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And last but not the least, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. The Bible says, being confident, Philippians 1, 6, that the very thing that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. The God that had begun this great work. Many of you have been formed. God is shaping you to where he wants you to go, molding you remolding you, breaking out some things, putting some back. He said, be confident of this very thing. That he which began, we have begun, God has begun something now. A good work in me, in you, will what? Perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Say, Lord, perform your work. Finish it in me. Complete me. Fulfill your purpose in me. Finish everything you have begun inside of me. Let everything that you have begun complete. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Complete, complete that which you have begun in me. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray with you today. If you are here, you have not received that Jesus Christ we are talking about. Everything begins there. The ball stops on Jesus Christ. Everything you are looking for, health, salvation, prosperity, love, all of the above is in Christ. Outside of Christ is crisis, cacophony, strife, envy, jealous, wickedness, death. But in Christ is peace. I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus Christ, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. And I believe that you died and resurrected from my sins. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. God bless you. Hallelujah. I love you all, all my heart. But above all, Jesus love you the more. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.